Hey guys and welcome to The Fish Room. I'm Rachel O'Leary and it's time for a Species Spotlight. This week we're going to talk about the last of my new little natives, Elisoma okifinoki or the pygmy sunfish. Now these guys are super teeny, super beautiful, and really, really appropriate for an aquarium as small as five gallons. So let's take a look and I'll tell you more about them. Now I pulled these guys into a little tiny holding container just so that I could uh, have a better shot of showing them to you. You can see that the females are largely colorless with just some barring and spotting and the males have substantially more color. Now as this guy gets into breeding mode, he'll turn almost solid black with blue spangling. Hopefully he'll extend his finish for you during this video so you can see how truly beautiful they are. Now, one of the things that makes these guys a little bit challenging is that they don't often take to prepared foods very well. They really like live food, and but sometimes can get onto frozen. I like to feed them live white worms and Daphnia specifically, though black worms chopped up can often work as well. Now the males you can see are quite a bit larger than the females. Now these guys come from Georgia all the way through the top third of Florida and they are really without a doubt one of the most beautiful little pygmy fish available. Though not commonly seen in the hobby which is a real shame because they're appropriate down to tanks as small as five gallons maybe even two and a half for a pair. Now they are very easy to breed as long as you provide tons of live food as well as an insane amount of plant cover because despite their small stature these guys have wicked temperament. They can be really aggressive to each other, and not only that, but they'll also eat all their eggs and fry. They drop little teeny tiny eggs, which take about three days to hatch, and the fry are super tiny, so it's really important to have them in a very, very mature aquarium full of infusoria and other microorganisms for the fry to pick at. Now, really fine-leaved, dense plants like java moss or hornwort or things like that can also be really useful when rearing these fry. I have the best luck breeding them outside where they have an abundance of natural food sources. They tend to like things a little bit on the softer side though I have found them to adapt well to a moderate hardness. My preference is to keep them in trios of two females to one male just because the males are so amorous they'll chase the females almost constantly to try and spawn. They do this really awesome little wiggle dance when they're spawning and the male extends his fins. Now I am moving these guys outside so I hope to do an update video for you guys capturing some of this breeding display as well as the fry and their growth development. However, there's some really great papers um, on the internet, so I'll link to one of those below if you wanna learn more about these guys. All in all, I think they're a super underrated, if challenging fish that is more than appropriate for the moderate to advanced hobbyist, and certainly worth a lot more effort than they're getting. Now, as always, I'll put a more complete species profile with the temperature range, pH range, and adult size in the video description. I hope you guys have enjoyed learning a bit more about this pygmy sunfish. I know I can't wait to get them outside and get a lot of fry. As always, thank you for your continued support. Make sure you stop by my Instagram, my Facebook, and my website, MsJinx.com, where you can find my upcoming speaking engagements, my current stock list, and information on all things nano. As always, let me know below if you have any comments, suggestions, or questions.